The Book of Boba Fett. It looks like Star Wars. It sounds like Star Wars. It even seems to smell like Star Wars. But for some reason, it just doesn't feel like Star Wars. So the question is, what went wrong? Welcome everybody to this new video. I usually talk about Germany and German culture on this channel. But today I want to talk about the book of Boba Fett, which seems to be not related to Germany or German culture directly, but in a way it is through me. So to get things started, I am the biggest Star Wars fan ever. Everybody is the biggest Star Wars fan ever. In fact, one of the first movies I ever saw was The Empire Strikes Back in 1981 in Germany when I was a kid. That's a long time ago. This movie was kind of a religious awakening. Growing up in Germany during the 1980s was rather bleak. And Star Wars not only saved me, but a whole generation of the unbelievably boring life during the last years of the Cold War in Germany. Apart from being a Star Wars fan, I've always been the biggest Boba Fett fan. And everybody's the biggest Boba Fett fan ever. I used to collect all the action figures. I had Boba Fett's spaceship. That was a cool spaceship. And everyone was playing with Star Wars toys all the time. It was one of the most important things we had. So you can imagine my excitement when Disney announced the book of Boba Fett. And when it finally came out, well, so it was a very weird thing. In a way, it was kind of like this apple flavored bubble gum. You know, it's artificial flavors. It does not really taste anything like apples, but I get the point that it's supposed to be apple flavor that I'm tasting right now. This is what I thought about the book of Boba Fett when I started watching it. It seems to be Star Wars, like in every single aspect, but at the same time, it's somehow not. So I'm going to share some observations I made watching the book of Boba Fett, and I'm going to divide this video into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk about the five things which I think are great about the book of Boba Fett. In the second part, I'm going to share my thoughts on the five big problems of the series. So let's go. So the first great thing about Boba Fett is the nostalgia. Like right from the beginning, when Boba Fett crawls out of the Sarlacc, we're basically back in The Return of the Jedi. So the whole framework is established, we get the connection to the old movies and the whole Star Wars universe. Then of course we have the Sand People there and Boba Fett spends some time with them. We have all the spaceships, we have the weapons, the lightsabers, we have Wookiees, and we have Jabba the Hutt times two. Why is there two Jabbas? And then we have the Rancor monster. The Rancor monster. I wonder if this is going to be significant later on. And of course, even the link to the newer Star Wars series like Mandalorian are there. We have Baby Yoda. <laughs> we have the Mandalorian himself. When we have Luke Skywalker. So it kind of comes back full circle, which is nice. The second great thing is that the Mandalorian reappears. I watched The Mandalorian, I really liked it, so it's cool to have the kind of reference in there. And of course, seeing The Mandalorian playing a major part in the book of Boba Fett. The third great thing is yeah! Baby Yoda. Grogu is just so cute. Baby Yoda comes back and starts his training. So Grogu is trained by Luke Skywalker. And it's always great to see little Baby Yoda do adorable things. Great thing number four, Luke Skywalker. At the end of The Mandalorian, Luke Skywalker picked up Baby Yoda in order to start training him. And so we see this whole thing, Luke Skywalker training Baby Yoda and therefore establishing the connection to The Empire Strikes Back where Luke Skywalker was trained by Yoda and now this whole master and apprentice situation is being turned around by Luke actually training Yoda or Baby Yoda. So right now it's basically reversing The Empire Strikes Back. Luke is not trained by Yoda, 
but he is actually training Yoda with the knowledge that he was taught by Yoda himself. Yeah, so this is great. And the fifth great thing being episodes five and six. Ooh. Now, this will seem kind of ironic, but I'm sure that many people who watched the book of Boba Fett have the same thoughts on it. Episodes 5 and 6 actually bring back the Mandalorian, Baby Yoda and Luke Skywalker. And they also mark a sudden break in the series itself because Boba Fett disappears. Right. So this is remarkable and it's kind of weird too which leads us to the discussion of the five big problems of the series. Problem number one, the pace of the series. That's right from the beginning, the pace was really excruciatingly slow. What you see is Boba Fett with the sand people slowly picking up, slowly kind of recomposing himself and trying to get his biggest armor from the Sarlacc. And then finally, when he moves through the city, everything seems to be happening in slow motion. All the Star Wars movies always had like a very fast pace. There were basically action movies. But the Book of Boba Fett is nothing like an action series. And it's not like the show takes its time to evolve or like to kind of like have the character evolve and develop. No, it just, it seems like it doesn't really know where it's going. So everything gets kind of like tuned down a little bit. And this seems to be directly related to problem number two, which is the main character. When we watched the old movies, Boba Fett literally had only 20 seconds of screen time in The Empire Strikes Back and The Return of the Jedi. But what we see of Boba Fett, the bounty hunter there, it seems to be a totally different character. Now we have a very old actor. The thing is, he's just slow. And of course, the series kind of like emphasizes that he's maybe in bad health because he always sleeps in this water tank and um, trying to recover probably from his ordeal with the sand people and his injuries that he got from having fallen to the Sarlacc. Also, and you see this especially in the fight scenes, he just can't move as fast as he should. And this leads to problem number three. There seems to be a major disconnect. So when you look at the old Boba Fett, let's say, let's just start with the character. The old Boba Fett was kind of an agile, young, also, let's say, much skinnier type of person. The book of Boba Fett shows an old, worn out Boba Fett in bad health. So this kind of like doesn't really go together. The other problem is that I've been wondering about how much time Boba Fett has actually spent in the Sarlacc. I mean, we remember Boba Fett accidentally got pushed into the Sarlacc by Han Solo in The Return of the Jedi. Now, after that, Jabba the Hutt was defeated, uh, the Empire was defeated, the Death Star exploded, and Darth Vader died, and then the Mandalorian came up, Luke Skywalker picked up Baby Yoda and took Baby Yoda with him to start his training, and then we see Boba Fett finally crawling out of the Sarlacc. How long has it been in there? Was it weeks, months? or maybe years. So that's kind of strange. It doesn't really connect well to where the Return of the Jedi left off. Yeah, how long did he actually spend in the Sarlacc? And how long could you actually survive in there? Because in a way, it's just a giant stomach, isn't it? But anyway, so that's not the only thing. So right now, because we have Boba Fett not being a bounty hunter at all, so because he's trying to somehow reestablish himself as a sort of sheriff kind of character in that city. tend to rule with respect. So there's a certain disconnect there. Does Star Wars have to be logical at all? Because let's be honest, none of these things actually exist, but probably some coherence in the story would be beneficial. Which brings us to problem number four, which is the story. Now, the story and the very slow pace of the show seem to be closely connected because we see Boba Fett basically repeating the same routine over and over. He goes out with his crew, talks to some thugs, doesn't get what he wants, he goes home. Then he does the same thing again, goes to some thugs, he fails again, goes home. Then there might be an attack on the streets, like some kind of chase going on there, which is also incredibly slow extremely slow and awkward fight scenes. So basically the story is going nowhere until it gets interrupted by episodes five and six, where Boba Fett just drops out and a new story begins, which features the Mandalorian, Baby Yoda and Luke Skywalker. And this is really the strangest thing because for some reason, the book of Boba Fett is at its best 
when Boba Fett, the main character, is not in it. So it's kind of, it, it might be on purpose. Probably the whole story is going to take an ironic twist in episode seven, who knows. But at this very point after episode six, it just doesn't seem to make any sense. So let's turn to the last problem, problem number five, the nostalgia. I've mentioned the nostalgia as the first greatest thing in the book of Boba Fett, but it's also its biggest weakness and its biggest problem because it seems like the book of Boba Fett and just like episode one, episode two, episode three, episode seven, episode eight, and episode nine, they only work to a certain degree because of the nostalgia, the catering to the fans, and the constant references to the old Star Wars movies, episode four, episode five, and episode six. I think the biggest problem is that it's not enough to always quote the original movies because you need a story that can carry its own weight. But this is not really happening here. So this is why in the beginning, in the first four episodes, you get the feeling that they do not really know where they are going. It takes an awful lot of time to put Boba Fett in the city where he can actually start to act as the protagonist of the story. So it seems like if there weren't references to the old movies every 10 seconds or so, the new movies and all these spin-off series would not be able to stand on their own feet whatsoever. So this nostalgia is nice as it may be is also the biggest problem of the series because it seems forced. We need to be reminded, yes, the book of Boba Fett is part of the Star Wars universe. So we need to see that young Luke Skywalker guy and we need to have a monster from the old movies reappear like a Wookiee or Rancor monster. And we need the sand people. And we have to be reminded that it takes place on Tatooine, which is like the most archetypal Star Wars location of them all. But the thing is, without these references, it would never work. So it's only through this nostalgia that the book of Boba Fett becomes possible at all. And they take the nostalgia game even further by having to reference the Mandalorian in episodes five and six and ironically making the book of Boba Fett work through not having Boba Fett in it in episodes five and six. Maybe they just didn't know how to further develop the story and they're gonna turn it all around in the following episodes. No, they've not been able to turn it around. So I already finished my video and then episode 7 came out and of course it wraps up the whole series. It's the last episode. What happens is the two storylines get combined. So you have Boba Fett reappearing and then there's Baby Yoda coming back in Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. And where's Luke now? So he just kind of fell out of the picture. And he's reunited with the Mandalorian. So it's the end game, so to say. So they have to take on all the evil adversaries in order to claim the city as their territory. So Boba Fett faces this evil blue cowboy droid who somehow reminds me of the cowboy in Westworld and they have this Western-like standoff. And again, he's very slow and he can't really move as fast as his opponent. Luckily, the Mandalorian helps him out. After they defeat this evil cowboy droid together, these praying mantis-like drones show up and they shoot up the whole place. Well, these things do kick some ass. And then it becomes really crazy because Boba Fett rides the Rancor monster. I told you the Rancor monster would be significant at some point in the story. And this is the only way they can break through the shields of those droids. Not even the Mandalorian's black lightsaber was able to do it. Well, it's weird. I thought the black lightsaber was the ultimate weapon. So this is why the Rancor monster had to be introduced in the beginning. And in an ironic twist, the Rancor monster itself starts taking the city apart. And now they have to defeat the Rancor monster. And this is where Baby Yoda comes in because in the end, Baby Yoda puts the Rancor monster to sleep and just lays down next to it and also falls asleep. So this is it. So if we take a look at all the episodes and we take into account that weird break after episode four, where the Mandalorian becomes the main character and Baby Yoda is introduced just in order to bring him back and to save the day. So if we look at it all, what went wrong? 
In the beginning I said, it looks like Star Wars, it sounds like Star Wars, but in a way it doesn't really feel like Star Wars. I think the biggest problem is that sometimes it just seems to be a total chaos. The story takes off very slowly and to my mind Boba Fett is just wasting too much time in the beginning with the sand people. So what happened to the sand people after Boba Fett left? Are they still working together? Are they having like some kind of business partnership? Well the story just seems to be riddled with plot holes. And then when he slowly starts to establish establish himself, the story takes a different turn and the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda come in. In the end, those two storylines get combined, but episode 7 itself then is complete chaos. Probably it's meant to be that way because it's supposed to show how chaotic war is, how chaotic battles actually are. Well, I think it's total chaos from the beginning to the end. Ultimately, we can say Boba Fett and the Mandalorian, the two series are combined and it's going to be interesting to see where they go from there. Where do you actually go from here? Well, I guess we'll find out. In the near future. So finally I can say is like the story sometimes looks a bit forced and sometimes the direction of the story is also not very clear. I mean it is cool to have all these characters, the monsters, the spaceships and the locations reappear in the series. It just feels kind of forced doesn't it? As I said before I think the main character Boba Fett is very slow and kind of just feels like he never really establishes himself as the protagonist of the book of Boba Fett. And so many of the other characters characters are actually more interesting, especially Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian. So while the Mandalorian was basically commercializing on this whole western atmosphere and this whole western movie vibe, the book of Boba Fett never quite gets there. Although it has the kind of like western feel in the music and the location on Tatooine makes the perfect background for a western movie. <laughs> But these are just my thoughts. I would be happy to see what you think about it all in the comments. So thanks for watching, see you next time and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.